Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have more major 2024 election news. We've got The Economist coming out and admitting Trump has really stabilized a solid lead. Nobody's seen polling like this out of Republican candidates since 2004. 538 has had to admit Trump's leading or it's close. They got him at like a 50% chance. Really, you look at the numbers in the states, they're overestimating Biden, especially in Pennsylvania. Even the betting has Biden as a slight favorite in Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, and Michigan. When you look at the adjusted underestimation of Trump in 2020 and 2016, Trump's probably up by four or five points, even if you want to cope and say, oh, now the polls are, you know, you look back at 2022, the midterms, Trump is overperforming. Look at 2020, 2016, even if, even if Trump's overperforming by a point or two, Trump can lose the popular vote by five or six points and still win the presidency based on how our electoral college is. So the, the real question is going to be, can Trump win the popular vote? He's up to around a 70% chance to win the election. We've got the debate upcoming. CNN has just gone ballistic. You know, th there's all these different rumors coming out. And they don't want anyone reacting to the deba debate live. They're muting the mics. And, and there was another thing I was going to talk about. Let me see if I could find it when it comes to CNN. Oh, yeah. The Biden campaign spokesperson said that Biden won't commit to taking a drug test. And so she goes on CNN and this dude, he doesn't even ask a legitimate question. You would think with all this drama surrounding it, and now a physician has come out and admitted some things. We're going to talk about that when it comes to Biden. But Biden's at Camp David seven or eight days. You would think the obvious question for the spokesperson would be, is Joe Biden going to take a drug test? Donald Trump has formally challenged Biden with legitimate paperwork to take a drug test. Trump says, I'm going to take one. And they don't even ask that. They're, he says, what is your opinion of this? And then she says, I don't even know how to respond. That's what she said. It's like, what are we doing? Just ask her, will Biden take a drug test? Yes or no? The answer is not, I don't even know how to respond. And then she says, Hillary did really good against Trump in their debates and Biden did good. It's just all crap. They don't even ask legitimate questions. It's the most obvious thing ever when it comes to you're interviewing the sp spokesperson. Why are you giving her an out and a layup by saying, what did you think of this? Why would we care what she thinks? Ask a yes or no question. Is he going to take a drug test? Because they know it's going to make Biden look bad because he's denying and he's not going to take one. So they have to do a layup question to try and get around it. That's that's really what's going on there. And I'm sorry I can't play it because I've got like 50 tabs pulled up at a time on this computer. I'm, I'm going to get like a new $2,000, maybe $3,000 uh, computer heavy duty with streaming and everything. Um, but I got like 50 tabs pulled up on here. So if I do put the volume up and, and play clips, the audio is going to be captured from other tabs and things like that. So it's a little bit of an issue. Uh, presidential debate prediction. Quote, Mr. Trump, tell us, about how evil you are, you have one second to respond. So this is very key, this is very important. During the debate, they're going to ask Trump, you know, about 2020, does he still deny the election results? They're going to talk about January 6th. They are obsessed with January 6th. January 6th is their ultimate god. It is their Super Bowl. I mean, you see these things like the reports of, of the top Democrats going into churches and just, I mean, they're all atheists now, all the liberal Democratic kids, they all go into the churches and they're like, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, BLM, BLM, Antifa, January 6th. Jan it's a worship session for January 6th. They won't stop talking about it. And Trump needs to come out and say, let me do a three minute explanation on January 6th because I was giving a speech I said, be peaceful. The Oath Keepers were pissed off. They said my speech was bad and they had to take matters into their own hands. That's what they said in text mess messages. So I'm vindicated completely. But I said I was going to go to the Capitol and speak and keep everyone because originally that's what Trump wanted to do. He wanted to go to the Capitol. He only realized he couldn't go to the Capitol when his advisors in the car said, no, it's not safe. So they took him back to the White House Trump sees what's going on. They say, oh, Trump stayed there for an hour, didn't do anything. Trump actually put out a tweet at like 2.33 saying, stop doing it, be peaceful. There's police officers, things like that. And then he shot a video. So he actually put a tweet out before that. So Trump, you know, Trump said to be peaceful. Let's move on from January 6th. Everything he did was completely 
within his rights. He questioned the election and then they, they say, oh my God, he tried to throw out the electoral votes. Yeah, it's a democratic process. It would have went to the Supreme Court. And Trump you know, left the White House, no problems. He didn't make a fuss about it. And Biden was in on the 20th. So th there's really some revisionist history when it comes to that. L like you're obstructing democracy, you know, you're obstructing Biden from taking over, that none of that happened. It, it was all a clean process. So that's what Trump needs to come out and say. And on top of that, this is a bigger picture. It's like, Joe, this is so pathetic. We're sitting here talking about something four years ago that was a non-story. You've got like half of the people have come out as informants. What are we doing? Why don't we talk about issues in 2024? You have the worst approval rating in U.S. history. When you adjust the economy for inflation, my economy, according to all the experts, is far better. It's a 3% growth rate. All the numbers have come out when you adjust it for inflation. You've got, you know, the average U.S family gaining like 1% in terms of overall net worth adjusted for inflation. When you adjust all of it for inflation, Biden's economy is horrible. So, so and then you get into things like immigration, it's even worse. And the other thing I think they're going to bring up CNN, they're going to do a question talking about Trump denying the 2020 election. They're going to do January 6th and then they're going, they might do those together. And then they will also talk about abortion when the polls show abortion is like the 17th most important issue. That's the Democrats' one trump card, if you will, figuratively. Uh, but that's their one issue that they win on, which, by the way, makes no sense. And this is, that's another debate for another day when it comes to the, the moral obligation of a population to value life. I know it feels good to have raw sex. I get it. But, but, but it's, it, it, you have to value life and, and refrain from that. If I ate 5,000 calories every day for the next year, I'd get really fat. But eating feels really good, so why can't I do it? Well, there's a consequence to it. And I guess you could get gastric, you know, the surgery, whatever. But there, there's consequences to things. You can't just kill the thing. Um, but that's another story for another day. The point of it is they're probably gonna they're probably going to make abortion into this big thing. It's the 17th most important issue. It's not in the top five. It's immigration. It's economy. It's all the crime, the violent crime that now is it's come out that they're they're underreporting all their numbers. They they've they've done the basically the opposite of what they did with Trump, where they elevated the misdemeanor charges. You've got violent felonies and they're getting thrown down, and now they're all misdemeanors. I've seen it, and this is just I mean Trump needs to print this out, print this out. And just and just show it to the American people during the debate. So there's a lot of revisionist history. You can see the illegal immigration. Trump actually lowered the illegal immigration before the pandemic because there was also the narrative, oh, the immigration was out of control. Trump got saved by the pandemic, which lowered the immigration, the illegal immigration, uh, and just immigration overall because of the pandemic and, and, and the protocols. But no, it was already going down significantly, and we have just gone sky high. Even during Obama, it wasn't uh, it wasn't bad, and with Biden, it's just you know three four times more than what it was under Trump. And you should just bring a photo of it. This is what's going on. You're the one back on January 2021 when you went into office. You signed the executive order. You killed all the immigration policies I had that were lowering it. You said they were racist. You said you wanted people coming into the country and that's what America is. And you gaslit people by saying that because we can bring people and that's fine, but they need to be checked and they need to be legal. And this immigration is just out of control. There's too many people entering uh, at a certain time. And then they say, well, you know, Republicans didn't help us. We were trying to pass, you know, immigration policy because you throw in the Ukraine support and everything else. So obviously they're not going to agree to that. Republicans, the representatives have to mirror what the Republican people are saying, the electorate, and they did not want support for Ukraine. So when you throw that into a bill, obviously they're not going to like it and they play dumb and say Republicans are holding this up. No, you ruined it when you said Trump was racist all the way back in 2015 and then in 2020 during the debates and you got rid of everything Trump put into place. So you ruined it in 2020 and then it's all revisionist history. We've got a report that confirms vent and burn of toxic chemicals in East Palestine, Ohio. Train cr crash, they've admitted now it's, it was not necessary. So they derailed a train. They said, oh, there was a tanker. It was going to blow up. It was destined to blow up, possibly in a, a major population center. So we had to derail it, let all these toxins out. 
into the air. Now it's come out, no, they didn't need to do that. And so remember back when this happened, Pete Buttigieg saying this is protocol, this is what we needed to do. And you also had all the, de- the Democrats, liberals on Twitter say that, well, you know, because the town voted heavily for Trump, it's a real rural area, uh, they were fine with it happening. They were fine with all the toxins, all the chemicals being released. People had to flee. You look at the water, the water looked like gasoline. You throw it, it's got that weird chrome reflection. It's just all disgusting. And this is just a report that's confirmed that they did not need to derail the train on purpose in East Palestine and let, release all those fumes. I mean, look at that cloud right there. My God. We've also got this. Killing of Texas girl becomes a new immigration flashpoint. What, what about George Floyd with BLM when they used that and blew it all up and then had $2 billion in property damage? So see, they can use... The, the, certain things to politicize them and I don't even politicize this and, and then Republic, Republicans do it they cry foul we've got this dude who had dinner in Rome and apparently Italy and all of Europe is just total bipartisan support for Trump those people are seeing America and a lot of them say they're like well obviously they're going to re-elect Trump it's terrible what's happened you've got resorts in Europe saying we there's no Americans coming here there were thousands when Trump was president now nobody's here because the economy's so bad so they must be electing Trump and all, most of Europe is agreeing and now they have to have all these elections Europe's gone so far right they're emergency elections they're trying to vote all the liberals out so that's what's happening in Europe we also do have oh this so this came out There was a new Joe Biden conspiracy theory floating around and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, This is what I talked about and now I've been vindicated because when I talked about this and I said that that the Biden side effects of what they gave him during the State of the Union, they made him very irritable. He was nasty. Now a top expert White House physician has suggested that Biden's medical staff might be finding the right mix And you can see, look at this. They didn't get it right the last time out of the State of the Union. He was more alert, but he was a yelling, angry old man. So now the physician is is agreeing with me. So so I I did get that right when I said, yes, he's clearly on something, but the side effects, it's too strong. They have to change something and alter something. We've also got breaking news, huge last minute, desperate push behind the scenes by wealthy donors for Trump to choose Nikki Haley. This VP thing is just ridiculous. My goodness. I do think it's Burgum. All of the top markets say it's going to be Doug Burgum. Uh, you know, I think it's kind of a dud personally. A lot of people want Vivek. I understand. Some people want Glenn Youngkin. I think Glenn Youngkin would be a good choice in terms of winning Virginia. And that is a big state, even though it's, what is it, 10, 11 electoral votes. It's not going to be Nikki Haley. There's zero chance. Trump wants full and total control. That's why Burgum makes the most sense. It fits Trump's profile of wanting a VP to stay in the shadows and not overshadow him. And the issue, whether it's Ramaswamy, whether it's uh, someone like J.D. Vance, two years into Trump's second term, meaning in like 2026, early 2027, those uh, like Vance or Ramaswamy would already be angling to be the GOP nominee uh, for the 2028 election. Trump does not want that. And Burgum's got a lot of money. There's other things at play, but I think the dynamics of Burgum, I know also it came out, Vivek is going to be at the debate. People saying, you know, the, the the VP choice will be at the debate. I don't think it's going to be Vivek. None of the betting market has Vivek as any chance. I know people say, well, it's just betting, but it does seem like it is going to be Doug Burgum, at least from what I can see. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.